Do braces change your face? Hey guys, Dr. Nate here at Thrive Dental and Orthodontics and I want to answer that question today because I've been getting that a lot lately and the quick, quick, quick version is yes, it possibly can. Braces or Invisalign can change your face but I need to walk us through some things because there's definitely some subtle nuances, not even subtle, big differences in what braces and Invisalign can do to you being a kid or an adult, so big, big differences. So let's kind of dive into this and see how braces can change your face. So what are the three main ways braces or ortho can change your face? So the first one that probably happens the most is protrusion or retrusion of your front teeth. And that means how much your teeth are sticking out or how much are they coming back. So if they're sticking out, you might say they're protruded. Sometimes people say it's a big, full smile, but may feel like it's little coming out, a little bit too much, or you can have retruded, and that's the opposite. And that's what they used to do a ton back in the day, maybe like 20, 30, 40 years ago, they used to take out teeth on everybody. So their teeth would actually come backwards. So everything would come backwards and the appearance may not have been the best. And so that's why there's been a big shift into non-extraction. So that is protrusion versus retrusion. The second way we can do it, and we do this a lot, especially in teens or kids, we do the width. We can change the width of your jaw. Most of the time we're changing the width of the top jaw, your top jaw right here. Almost never, almost never, you can change the width of the bottom jaw. Or somebody tells you that they're gonna change the width of the bottom jaw, yes, something's not right. They can maybe tilt the teeth but your jaw, your lower mandible is fused at a very young age. Within the first few years of life, the jaw right here is fused. But in the maxilla or the top jaw, the bones that are coming together actually don't get fully fused until you're kind of mid-teens. And that's why tons of people will get certain appliances to help widen their jaw. And the third way we do it is the jaw relationship. That means front to back relationship. So some people have their top jaw that's too far back. We call that an underbite most of the time or class three. I've done tons of videos on that. Or sometimes the top jaw is too far out or maybe the lower jaw is too far back. And we'll call that a big overjet. Remember, I'm using the proper terminology here. That's not an overbite. If you don't know what the difference between an overjet and an overbite is, I've done a lot of videos on that too. But if your top jaw sticks out too much compared to the bottom jaw, we call that a big overjet. Okay, so let's go back to the first example, protrusion. We're just gonna keep that protrusion. We don't, won't talk about retrusion that much, but protrusion, if the teeth are sticking out too far, how do we fix that? Sometimes we fix that by taking out teeth, right? So sometimes we'll take out two top teeth or two bottom teeth and really bring the teeth back. And we don't do that as much. I'd say maybe 20% of the time, roughly-ish or so. A lot of the times it's because the patients don't like that look. They do not like how far their teeth are sticking out. They just say, hey, this looks bad. I want to take it back. Or maybe the teeth are really crowded and sticking out. And we say, hey, we can straighten these, but your teeth are going to stick out quite a bit. And the patient doesn't like that. So we take out some teeth to bring the teeth back so they're not so protruded. Something that goes along with that is lip competence. If you're just relaxing like this, and your lips do not come together. They do not come together. That means we can see the teeth. That means your lips are incompetent. They're not coming down. They're not coming together. But if you're in a relaxed state and your lips come together, that means they're competent. They're coming together. And that's a good gauge of how protruded your teeth are. If they're really protruded and you're just relaxing your lips, you may not be actually be able to close them fully. So maybe you want to contemplate between doing extractions or the second option which I haven't talked about yet which is IPR and that's when we do a little slimming between the teeth so I go right in between the teeth with like a thing that looks like kind of sandpaper-ish sort of and we create a little bit of space and that allows us to bring the teeth back a bit so really there's two main ways to bring the teeth back to avoid the protrusion that's taking out teeth, and that's by far the most dramatic way, but then you're taking out perfectly healthy teeth. And the second way is IPR, or slimming between the teeth. So that is one way we can affect the look of your face. The second way we're gonna affect the look of your face is with something called an expander, and that is done in teens, maybe sometimes slightly younger than that, but definitely not really done in adults unless we get to something different, which I'm gonna talk about here at the end. So something called an expander can actually expand the top jaw potentially to match the bottom jaw a little bit better. Most of the time we do it because you have a crossbite, we're trying to expand those top teeth or maybe we're trying to gain a little bit more space, but most of the time it's because of crossbite and that will affect your facial structure probably the least amount 
of these three that I've gone through. And thirdly, we can affect the jaw relationship. So if you're in a growing state, sometimes we'll give you something called the Herbst appliance or Forces appliance or Mara appliance. There's a bunch of different appliances that people use, but that will bring the lower jaw forward. But those appliances will affect the jaw structure. So it's gonna make it so the lower jaw is brought forward a bit more. Sometimes we do something called a reverse pull headgear. That's the only type of headgear I use. Nobody really uses the other type of headgear, but the reverse pull headgear will actually bring the top jaw forward. So if you think about it, if you're looking from the side or the profile, if you're using something called a Herbst, Mara, any of those type of appliances, it's gonna bring the lower jaw forward, which is gonna create a big difference in your facial structure. Or if you're using that reverse pull headgear, you're gonna bring that top jaw forward and that's also have a huge difference on your facial structure. All right, now let's talk about the difference between kids versus adults. So kids, I just say, is anybody who's still growing at least a little bit and that can be all the way up to age, maybe 18, 19. Some of the appliances we can use at that age, some of the appliances we have to use a little bit younger. But one of the things we can do in adults and kids, it's all the same, is extraction and IPR. That's pretty similar on either one, so that will make a big difference if you're a kid or if you're an adult. But let's go to option number two. Option number two is when we use the expander, and you guessed it, we cannot do that in adults without surgery. So there's something called a SARPI, which is a surgically assisted rapid palatal expander, and that's basically using an expander to expand that top jaw so that it matches the bottom, but with a surgery, and the surgery obviously is quite a bit more invasive as an adult, because as a kid, you just put the expander in and you expand it, it's easy. But as an adult, you have to go get the surgery first with the expander in, and then you can do the expansion. So once again, that won't change your facial structure a ton. It may make this area where your upper lip is a little bit more full, but it requires a surgery in adults. And lastly, the jaw relationship can be affected a lot in kids, but definitely not that much in adults without, you guessed it, surgery. So if you want to affect your jaw relationship as an adult, we can use the appliances. They may help a bit, but the, by far the biggest difference is jaw surgery. And whenever we talk about jaw surgery, I do not sugarcoat it. Jaw surgery is a big, 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 big deal. It's not like just getting a couple teeth taken out. It is a big deal. You're at a hospital or hospital-like setting. You're drinking soft foods for a while, and then you eventually recuperate until you get to harder foods. So it's definitely a big thing that you want to consider with your orthodontist and your surgeon. But as an adult, that's really the biggest way we can affect the job relationship. So if you have a big underbite, or a huge overjet, a lot of the times the only way to fix it as an adult is with surgeries that are gonna fix that jaw relationship. So you're contemplating getting braces or Invisalign and you're wondering if it's gonna affect your facial structure. So we've already talked about the three main ways it can, but what if you just have like a little bit of minor crowding or a little bit of minor spacing? Is it really gonna affect your jaw structure and you're an adult? The answer is probably not. It probably won't affect it that much. Yes, you can do minimal expansion, not really expansion, kind of tipping of the teeth. And if you have minimal spacing, you're gonna bring the teeth back, but it's not gonna make a huge difference. We're talking like millimeters here maybe. If it's really, really crowded, maybe you're gonna come forward a few millimeters. So the changes aren't as drastic if your treatment's not as drastic. Obviously, if you have a lot of crowding or a lot of protrusion or a lot of spacing, as you're moving those teeth. Yes, it can make a big difference in your facial structure. Okay, right, so I hope that makes more sense. Remember, there's three ways to really change your facial structure. That is the width mainly of the top jaw. It's the protrusion of those front teeth to give you that kind of bigger lip appearance or the retrusion of the teeth. And then it's the jaw relationship. Remember, if the lower jaw is too far back, we see that's a big overjet. If the top jaw is too far back, we call that an underbite. So if you're contemplating getting braces and wondering if the braces can affect your tooth structure, they absolutely can. But of course, consult your orthodontist or maybe your, your oral surgeon to see how it's gonna affect your face and if that's something you want. So thanks again, guys. Dr. Nate here at Thrive Dental Orthodontics. And as you know, I'm trying to give value to you, the patient. I'm trying to bring out videos every single week and I'm doing my best to answer all your questions or comments below. So please subscribe and I'll see you guys in the next video.